Hey everybody, welcome to the shop. On the operating table today, we've got the piston out of my 15 horsepower Patton Brothers oil field engine. I am taking the rings off because as I mentioned in my previous video, part of the piston is pitted and also the rings are pitted. And the general consensus on the smokestack forum was that the rings are no good. The piston's okay. It's just a uh, more more area to hold oil since the pitting is negative but the rings are no good and I, I, I agree so I gotta take the rings off however I don't know about you I don't have a piston ring expander that's that's this big also a couple of the rings have this sort of an end on them and you couldn't even really get a an expander on there because it would just slide off this angled end and I've learned from replacing a ring on my four and a half horsepower United that you can't really just bend these and bend one end up over the land and work around with a screwdriver because you're going to snap the ring. Luckily I learned that on the bad ring rather than the new good one. But I developed a technique that worked pretty well and I've used it a total of two times so that makes me a qualified YouTube expert. And these are the only tools you're going to need. Flathead screwdriver, which is the multi-purpose shop tool, and a couple thin drill bits. You only need three of them, actually. Okay, so the first step is to get the end of the ring out of the land with your screwdriver. And then take one of your uh, drill bits and just drop it in there. Just like that, then you can let go. Now, you want to work this drill bit all the way around 180 degrees from this opening here. So you do that just by, I prefer to twist the screwdriver. If you bevel it or angle it like this, you're going to be pushing the ring down or up. So I just like to put the screwdriver in there, give it a little twist, then I can move the ring. Then you let go, twist it again, and you work it around that way. Now that this drill bit is 180 degrees from the opening in the ring, I'm going to put a second drill bit in here and work it around, starting here, work it around to one end of the ring. I'll do that the same way. Sometimes if you do this, this drill bit, drill bit might fall out, and in that case you just repeat the process. Yeah, like that. Let's just put that one back in there. Start a little further away. That just doesn't want to stay in there. Well, I'm going to try to put this drill bit over there. Okay. This ring must be a little more worn out than the other ones, the other two that I've done. That, that uh, drill bit didn't want to stay in there, so we got one over here, one over here. Now I'm just going to start working this to the front, like I said. Basically, you want three drill bits holding up or holding out the piston ring. You don't need four, three is all you need. And you don't need to get it right to the end of the ring. Just get it within an inch maybe. Basically you just need the end of the ring to clear the groove. Now I'm going to work the other drill bit around. So 
So I'm going to need to put a third drill bit in here. I think it might hold this time. There we go. Just a little bit at a time, don't rush anything. Because these cast iron rings like to snap. Well, in my very limited experience with snapping these rings, but snapping them once is enough. I don't want to snap another one. Now you can see that ring is held away from the groove, away from the piston, all the way around. See, there's one drill bit. There's the gap. Another drill bit. Just like that. Now the next part, which is the easiest part, just slide the ring up. Now the only trick here that I haven't done yet is that obviously you don't want this ring to snap into this groove. It would be the end of the world if it did, but it's just more work for you you want to bring these drill bits up with the ring as you work this up. Now, these rings are bad rings, so I could just snap these and break them off, but I want to save at least one of these rings with the pinned end style, and at least one of these rings with the slant end, so I can have something to measure and to go off of for when I get new rings. Also, at least two of these rings, these two slant cut ones, they're not in terrible shape, so I'd like to keep them as spares or backup. So let's see how I do here. I want to, there we go, bring that drill bit up. Move it just a little bit at a time. Don't move one side too much. There we go. That's fetching up a little bit over here. There we go. Slide it up. Now that it's on top, I don't want, when the ring goes a spring and I don't want these drill bits to go flying, so I'm just going to slide these out. Slide this one out. Slide the last one out. Now this ring can be wiggled right off, and there you have it. That is not too difficult. So now that I have one of these rings off, I can see that it's really not much of a problem that I have to buy new rings, because these are a little bit worn. I'm sure they would have been just fine, but you can see up here, it's a lot thinner than down here. Up on this end, we've got 200 and uh, 226 thousandths. And on the other end here, uh, 297 thousandths, almost, almost 300. So it's, it's definitely worn. It's, uh, there's a bit, quite a bit worn off. I'm sure they would have worked just fine if it wasn't for this ugly rusted spot there, but what can you do? Anyway, that's all there is to it. Now I'm going to, well, I'm going to take these two rings off, these are the last two rings, and clean all the grooves and get, get the piston ready for some new rings. Well, I did break one ring, but that's okay because it gives you a perfect opportunity to make a nice, if you'll focus, a nice ring cleaning tool. I just ground a slight angle on there, cleaned up these sides, 
they can, it'll fit in there and you can do a good job scraping the carbon out because there's a fair amount of goo and schmoo in there. That about sums it up for me today. Hope this helps out some of you guys. Maybe you learned something. I learned something. I taught myself something. You know, you got to figure it out as you go along with this old stuff. So anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure to leave a comment or give me a thumbs up if you like this video. And hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. If you want to see more videos of working on old oil field engine stuff or tractor stuff or anything else. Thanks for watching and as always come back for more.